So I'm in test student mode so that I can show more authentically how it looks on your view. So I have to use LeapPath <laughs> as test student. Um, and um, yeah, so, um, so there's a fairly good chance that when I start, um, it'll just uh, give me one of the two questions I've done before. If that happens, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go in as an instructor, delete the attempt, and um, just to do a new one. I think uh, within a few of these attempts, I should uh, get a question I haven't done. So let me do that. I'm just going to roll the dice and start. Uh, remember, you have only 20 minutes. And OK, this is not one of the questions I've done before. So let me do this question. So when you are doing these um, timed assessments, one thing I really want to emphasize is focus on entering some answers within this time limit. I think I've seen a few people who have nothing in these answers and only have attached the work. And I have to tell you that when I see it, it's going to limit how much credit I can give you to the attached work. And it comes down to it's, a, it's an anti-cheating measure. It's like a lot of other things you've seen in this class. The 20-minute time limit itself is an anti-cheating measure. And uh, even if your answers are going to be partial answers, I do want them. Uh, so if you see that you are running out of time, you only have two or three minutes left, enter something here that connects to what you have been working on. Um, so that I can see what was done within the 20 minutes, and I will use my best judgment on uh, how much credit to give uh, you for anything else that I see. But if these are literally blank, I have to tell you just right up front that I'm going to be limited in how much credit I can give to even the most perfect work. Because the thing is, when I see something like that, what my imagination goes to is, uh, you started this, you gave this question to someone else, they worked it out, they sent it to you. And frankly, 20 minutes is the time that I says so that where that kind of stuff is actually pretty difficult to pull off. But if you are the one you're working on yourself, whenever your time runs out, you should have some partial work. Whereas if someone else is doing it for you, then you wouldn't have that partial work. So, so with that, let me get started here. I've wasted three minutes. Okay, when a skydiver falls through the air, the force of air register on the sky, okay, depends on how fast they're moving. Okay, they gave the description for force, all right. Where be, we're not supposed to be talking about force yet. Why is it? Uh, let me just keep going. <laughs> the important part is that the force is proportional to, okay, it speeds up, air resistance increases. Okay, let me just uh, give draw some sketch of um, what that's supposed to look like. So um, I have a skydiver. Um, who is falling, had some speed, and I guess there's some description of uh, air drag force. That's uh, uh, F air of B V squared. All right. The speeds up. The uh, where the force of air resistance equal to the grid. Okay. Um, Describe the key features of velocity and acceleration curves of the skydiver as a function of time. So this is something where it's good to have develop a mental image, kind of a way to think through a setup. So when you imagine someone falling through, initially they are going to start out with a zero velocity. They just stepped off the airplane or whatever. So as I'm imagining the velocity as a function of time, um, uh, velocity, okay, so I'm going to have to think about the sign of the velocity. So let me draw my axis so that I can draw negative downward velocities. So time and velocity. So they will start out as some kind of zero velocity. And as they start to fall through, they will accelerate downward. And for that acceleration, I think I can imagine the downward acceleration of uh, gravity. So that's going to be related to slope here. So as they will, so in the scenario where you could uh, ignore air resistance, your velocity curve would have looked something like this, just straight line, downward, um, it increases or the speed increases without limit. And because where they were describing this, um, uh, the skydiver 
which is a terminal speed where force of air resistance is equal to the gravitational pull. So at the time when you're doing this, we haven't covered the force that much yet, but I think it's enough to say that when you are in the, so if you don't have to draw a free body diagram, <laughs> I'm just do, pulling this from chapter five, chapter three material. If you are imagining balance of forces, there's gravity, and there's this uh, air resistance force that the terminal velocity will be equal to the gravity. So here, the acceleration will be zero. So you have to imagine this velocity curve somehow leveling off and, um, and having a slope of zero. So I have to connect this to some terminal velocity here. Let me just label this free term. And this will level off to some flat value. And that'll be the, uh, yeah, that'll be the velocity curve for the skydiver. And the acceleration for the skydiver will kind of match the features of the velocity curve. Once you have the velocity curve, the rest of the features for acceleration curve are set because they are related through derivative. So whatever value of acceleration you have should be equal to the slope here, minus g. So let me start here. So you are starting out at the acceleration and you see the slope kind of leveling off to zero here. So the slope will have to kind of die down to something that's a zero at terminal velocity. So something like that. I think uh, uh, starting from the moment they jump off until they reach their terminal, terminal velocity. Yeah. So I'll describe um, uh, velocity as a function of time starts off at zero. Um, uh, with a downward slope that matches with the acceleration of minus g at the start. As the air resistance becomes more significant, um, the velocity curve uh, levels off um, at the terminal velocity. Um, Acceleration as a function of time starts at minus g, and as um, the as the air resistance becomes more significant, um, the value of a t increases to uh, increases until a t is equal to zero. At terminal velocity, something like that. So really the intent to purpose of this uh, box is so that you can enter something within the 20 minute time limit. The figures, drawing, whatever, um, you have a little more time to attach work. So, um, so do that. And having both the word description and the drawing ha helps me to match that up so that I have some confidence that all these reasoning were worked out within the 20 minute time limit. Okay, so it says, suppose at terminal velocity, this relationship must be satisfied, right? The drag is that. Um, find an expression for terminal velocity of the skydiver in terms of given quantities. All right, um, so this must be why that uh, um, they are asking this. So, you know, in this uh, assessment, you're not really supposed to need the forces, but I think uh, within the question, I've given you enough that you can get by. So for F of air, you are told above that it's uh, B times V squared. And now you are being told that that's also equal to a force of gravity or M times G. So I have an equation. It says find an expression for terminal velocity. So this should be term. So, so yeah, do the algebra and solve for it. In the interest of time, I'm just gonna do the algebra in my head, um, which is gonna be square root of m times g divided by b. <laughs> I will write this out. I'm seeing that I only have half the time left, so I'm trying to make sure I have those times for CND. Um, yeah, that should be right. I'll finish this up later. Um, okay, if the mass of the skydiver is okay, um, Oh, am I just plugging the numbers? Yes. Oh, wait, wait. So I do need some intermediate things. Because they are, if they were asking me for what is the terminal velocity, 
That I could have just given right away because I already have the answer of a square root of mg over b. Now, that's not what they are asking, but it feels to me that it's going to be useful for me to know what this value is to answer what they are asking. How long will it take for Skydiver to reach this velocity? Okay, let me work out that answer. So this is my calculator, <laughs> square root of a uh, mass. Uh, I don't have the numbers. Okay, 90 kilograms times uh, g, 9.8 meter per second squared divided by b, um, 0 0.55. And I'm um, being careful to enter everything in basic SI units because I do. If I do, then I have confidence that the numerical answer that I get will end up being the basic SI units, meters per second. So I have about 40 meters per second as the approximate uh, terminal velocity. So with that in mind, this is the reasoning process I would go through. Let me copy this over as an aid to my explanation of the reasoning process. So recognizing that the, the real picture will be slightly more complicated, I can nonetheless use a bit of an approximation that will help me come up with a um, kind of uh, estimate that will be uh, close enough for what they're asking for. So the thought process I have is, okay, um, I don't know how to handle these curvy parts of the velocity curve, but I do know how to handle, well, what if uh, this just goes straight down to the terminal velocity? Then this time I can calculate because um, up until the velocity reaches this point, I can treat it as if I have, um, as if I have uh, uh, motion under constant acceleration, where acceleration is minus g. So I can say, all right, I have memorized many of uh, kinematics equations, one of which is the final velocity is initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Um, put, plug in the values that are relevant to here. My initial velocity was zero. My acceleration was minus g, and I'm looking for this time at which we reach the terminal velocity. And uh, and I have this value of v final. I'm going to use that value, v term. So I can um, do the algebra, solve for t term. Um, t term should be equal to. Um, Oh, yeah, I have to be a little bit careful with the sign. So let me write down V term divided by minus G. And um, so, you know, if you just uh, blindly plug this into calculator, what you'll get is, okay, V term, uh, my last value, divided by minus G, so minus 9.8, and you get a negative answer. And <laughs> so, you know, don't put in, I, I mean, I guess you could, whenever you have an uh, answer with a sign, um, uh, I, what I want you to get into habit of is critically thinking about what does the sign mean. And um, here, what I can tell you is that um, that is not supposed to be negative, that's supposed to be positive. So where did I go wrong? And um, without wasting too much time, because I think I have only six minutes left, uh, the mistake I made here is that I really should have expressed my V term as uh, minus 40 meters per second. Um, and G, G, by the way, by convention is always 9.8, positive 9.8 meter per second squared. So uh, that missing minus sign is really what I missed. Um, so here I know how to correct my sign error. So I'll correct it and I will say that it's positive 4.09 seconds as uh, uh, is the estimated time to reach terminal velocity. And all this work, I'm just going to attach it after uh, my time, once out or after I've submitted my answers. Um, and by the way, so with the designers, what I would recommend is if you can spot your errors quickly, then do that, fix it properly. If somehow you can't, then I hope you have enough intuition to know that this minus sign is wrong. So you guess that, oh, it must be positive 4.08 seconds. And, and that's going to be better than simply leaving that minus sign in your answer. 
I want you to develop physical intuition. No, when you have made a sign error, even if you can't quite trace all the steps that led to the sign error. So uh, let's see. Okay. So it says, estimate how long the skydiver will take to fall through the distance of five kilometers. Um, that's an interesting question. So um, because I have only five minutes, I'm going to um, make use of my intuition, which is that um, I don't think in the four seconds of reaching terminal velocity, the skydiver would really have uh, fall, fallen through a great portion of the five kilometer of distance. Like if I were to work out, uh, so, you know, it, so up until this time, if I work out how much distance did the skydiver fall through, I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, definitely even less than one kilometer, maybe even much less, like a few hundred meters maybe. So with that in mind, I can make this approximation. I can make the approximation that for the vast majority of time, the speed of the skydiver will be at this terminal velocity. So the way I'm going to simplify this question is okay. Um, delta t for delta x of five kilometers moving at speed of a vector. So I'm going to ignore the pieces having to do with this amount of acceleration. I'm going to ignore it, and I'm going to treat this as a constant velocity motion. That both makes things simpler, and also you know, hopefully it'll be justified in the end. Uh, let's see here. OK, three minutes and a half. So I need to write down my uh, one of the kinematics equations. So I have for x final is equal to x initial plus initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. I have this memorized so that I can recall it quickly. Uh, for the distance of five kilometers, I will say I don't care about the initial position. And I've said where it's going to be constant. So I'm going to be ignoring acceleration. So I only have this. So uh, I'm looking for time. So I say solving for t, t final is equal to x final, five kilometers, divided by v naught. And I think, did I work out for you not? Uh, yeah, it worked it out before, uh, 40 meters per second, yeah. So I'll say, um, so my distance travel, five kilometers or 5,000 meters, basic SI units, divided by V naught, uh, or what I had before, 40.045, that should be enough. So uh, I will say T, C, T of, uh, of about uh, 125 seconds or so uh, to travel five kilometer at constant velocity of a V term uh, for most of the distance. That should be it. I have minute and 40 seconds. Um, that might be enough time to actually attach my work. So it's uh, up to you if uh, um, when you choose to attach work, you could attach it during your um, work, but you know, I, I think I'm going to run out of time. So one thing I do recommend is I do recommend that you organize your work. So as I was working through here, I didn't really uh, label anything. So if I attach this as is, it's going to be super confusing. So let me at a minimum label it so I can figure out what matches with what. Um, this is, I think, a B, and uh, so I think I can, let me do the algebra that I skipped before. So dividing both sides by B, I have V term squared is equal to MG divided by B. So, um, and taking square root gives me this, which I got. And actually this is um, transition of the C, uh, where I use this result to, to kind of do this estimate. Um, I might put in some explanation because uh, some of the things I said out loud, it really should be in written form. Uh, treat as constant uh, acceleration motion. Um, and for um, this would be for part D. Yeah. 
and uh, to say um, treat as constant uh, velocity motion. Okay, and uh, so when the time runs, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, submit it for me. Uh, so after it's submitted, you will see that it's left to you at this screen where you can still save work and continue. And I recommend that you do that. And somehow, if so let me do this now and then I will show you two places where you will see work. One place where you can't change anything and another place where you can change it because with attaching work, there's no time limit. Um, I mean, I mean, so I do want you to do it relatively quickly after you've submitted your answer and uh, your honor code still applies while you are working on your work. You can't get outside the help. You just have to do it on your own. Um, but um, if it takes you some time to organize your work or maybe sometimes as you are working through, you left some parts that you couldn't quite solve through and you just want to spend another five minutes to try working it out. All of that's fine. When I look at the work, I look at it um, understanding that some of it might have been done outside the time limit. So uh, let me just uh, finish attaching this. And then I'll save and continue. So that should be it. So save work and continue. And now as you look at it, by the way, don't be um, surprised by score of zero. It's fine. Uh, it's going to be zero until I have graded it. And uh, to check if I've graded it or not, what you should be checking is the this button here, review work in gradebook. When you click on that, you will see your own work. Uh, your answers and your attached to work. And if you don't see any feedback from me, that means I haven't graded it yet. Whenever I grade, I always leave feedback. Um, so, uh, so, <laughs> so don't worry about the zero. Um, so here, as you view work here, you will find that if you re recognize that something was done wrong and you want to change it, this doesn't let you edit because you are in the view work uh, screen. It, it's a view only screen, you can't change anything. In order to get to the, uh, can I go back to, uh, I might not be able to go back even. Um, so to uh, return to grade the book, yeah, yeah, I don't think that does it. Um, so to go back to the screen where you can actually change your work, the easiest way to do it is by refreshing your screen. Because when you refresh, what it does is your uh, canvas reloads the module item. As it reloads, it shows you the screen that you would see as you uh, access this uh, thing on my open map. Now, as you access it, you have used all your attempts and you won't be able to change your answers or re -attend. That's not possible. But if you click on add work here, that's the screen where you still can change your answers, but you can change your work. You can delete this if you wanted to. Can I delete? You can delete them if you want to, I don't. Um, and you can make any changes. Now, when you make changes, just to know, um, know that it timestamps your response. So, um, so when you review your work, I think it will show you the timestamp. Yeah, it shows when you last changed it. And uh, again, just to emphasize, um, you do you are allowed additional time after you submit this to organize and attach your work. I mean, you know, I might be worried if I see this uh, like another day. Then you know, don't do that. Just to take a few minutes to uh, organize and attach. Don't take hours. But uh, there, there's no strict time limit because what I grade is your answers. I don't grade your work on its own. I grade your answers informed by the work that I see here. Um, let me cover just two more things before I sign off and you know invite for any questions. Sorry for people who joined a little bit late. Uh, I have to leave early today. I My plan is to leave around the 12.50. Um, so, um, so, so the two things to cover. <laughs> One, um, let me show you what I will see as I grade your uh, freeform timed assessment. 
So I'm just gonna go into this view as an instructor and I'm just gonna, um, so, um, so when I grade, this is what I say. So this is test submission, I say this, and um, as I grade it, I will add some feedback and um, all that. Um, and uh, so as you are, so you won't have access to this until after due date. And if you are using late pass, I think that means uh, one week from today. Uh, sorry, one week from last Friday, so until this Friday. So basically, you have to reach the due date to access it. All these questions, they have a detailed answer key attached to it. This is one of the few places where you can actually see the answer key. And this is to help you uh, complete your grade report. Um, in case, uh, in the likely case that I'm behind the grading, <laughs> uh, you have access to answer key. You can look at the answer key and judge for yourself how well you've done and, um, and you know, figure out. Yeah, so, um, yeah, well, some of these were randomized, but anyways. Um, so, so yeah, that's one thing I wanted to show.